This is a sitting ringside with David Penzer. Quick Fix on Radio Influence. Former WWE ring announcer and one of the only people other than myself who got to do this for a living, Justin Roberts. I don't know if you know this. I don't know if we ever talked about this, but um, uh, Chris was a good friend. I traveled with him. He lived in the same city as I did, Steve Regal, Fit Finley, uh, two people that are very important to you, uh, and, and a couple other guys. And we would socialize on our uh, when we had time off with our families and and uh, and Chris and Nancy. And um, uh, the grunge lived in the same city, too, Peachtree City in Atlanta. So uh, uh, I saw the a lot of things that he hid from the guys. Uh, did you ever see anything when Chris was on the road towards the end that made, made you think that uh, he was starting to maybe uh, lose it a little bit? I know that you can never have foreseen what you did. I didn't either, but uh, just that maybe he was, uh, he was starting to cave. I mean, I always knew that he had two sides. I always knew that other side of him from the stuff that happened <clears throat> that I talk about um, stuff that happened you know, at, at restaurants, even domestically when he was drinking and, you know, who knows what else he was doing. So I, I saw that savage side of him. Um, I had dinner the other night with Brett Hart and uh, we were talking about that and like Brett had never seen that side of him. So some people did, some people didn't, but I, I knew that other side. Um, it was pretty scary. Yeah. Um, it's funny because I, I talk about, Go ahead. I was just going to say, I, I talk about like, even like the stuff that he put me through, um, you know, that was just some of it, but most of it, like we were always very cordial and he was very good to my family, which I talk about and, and tell stories in there. Um, so it's, it was just, it was weird. Everything about it was weird and obviously very sad and, um, and awful. It's fun. It's it's funny. Uh, none of it's funny, quite frankly, but it's ironic looking back because some of the people that were closest to him never saw it. Uh, because I remember you ta- you're talking about Brett talking to Brett Hart that he never saw anything like that, and you did. I remember when this all went down. I ha- was on the phone for hours with Chris Jericho, who was much closer to Chris Benoit than I was, and I was pretty close to him and his family. And uh, he had never seen that. He was shocked, and I was telling him the stories mm-hmm. about how uh, how. You know, they would both Chris and Nancy would both go to Johnny Grunge and tell their, you know, they, you know, they'd have a fight. They'd each tell their side of the story. Uh, Johnny Grunge, to me, I think, was the only person that didn't they didn't feel to judge them because Johnny Grunge was kind of a screw up uh, in, in, a, in a nice way. The nicest guy in the world, but kind of a screw up. So I don't I don't think that that he that they felt like they judged him. But I think that Chris felt like anybody else, whether it was Brett or 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 Chris Jerick or any of those guys would judge him. Uh, so I think he hid it from his closest friends. And well, the um, thing with Brett, Brett said that he was always very respectful of him. And I could I could totally picture what I think it would look like if, if Chris and Brett were hanging out. And I think that's part of it. Chris really respected Brett and like he wouldn't do that in front of Brett. Um, he wouldn't do that in front of Jericho. I, I could see that. Now, you heard the news. Uh, you already were suspicious, I assume, that he didn't show up because we both know that Chris Benoit doesn't miss shows. Uh, but uh, but you heard the news. Uh, tell me about how that was when uh, when Vince called you guys in, in that day at TV. Um, Vince was going to be addressing us later in the day. At, we had been in Corpus Christi at the arena all day. And, uh, there, of course, was a brand split at the time. And... Um, both brands were there. So everybody was there and a lot of talent had come back. Like they were going to have a lot of cameos. It was going to be Vince's funeral. So there were going to be a lot of cameos on the show. So there were, there's a lot of talent there that day. And towards the end of the day, when we were going to be getting ready to do the show, that's when we got called into the arena and Vince got a mic and went in the ring and addressed us. And um, before he started talking, I, saw some whispering and and after the whispering people would you know their faces would drop or their hands would cover their face and um knew we weren't getting good news and when he presented us with the information it it came off as if i mean to me at least uh, it came off as if police went there and, and found the three of them dead 
<clears throat> so we, you know, assumed that they were the three of them were murdered. So and that 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 got. you didn't have any thought going through your mind that something wacko happened inside that house. No, no. When when it was presented that the police went over there and the three of them had been murdered, um, that to me was somebody murdered them. It's interesting because I remember that day like it was yesterday. I'm sitting in my house right now and. Uh, I was taking a nap. My son, uh, uh, who's now 22 years old, woke me up and said, Chris and Nancy and Daniel are dead. And, uh, you know, you first wake up, you're kind of groggy, and you, I wasn't sure what I heard. And no matter what went through my head, I knew that there was – that whatever happened was nobody but two people in that house ending up with three people dead. I, there wasn't a doubt in my mind. Sitting Ringside with David Penzer can be found on Apple Podcast, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, Google Play, and RadioInfluence.com.